think that's the one. Now, if your band only has one guitarist, or the song you are creating only has one guitar part, you may want to record the same part two or three times and layer them in order to get that fat metal sound. Pan one all the way to the left, one all the way to the right, and leave the last one centered. What you don't want to do is play it once and then duplicate the track multiple times. This method will not provide the stereo separation needed to get that full sound you're looking for. In this particular song, we've got two different guitar parts working together, producing harmonies as well as different accents. Your first thought may be to simply plug into the same amp and record your second guitar. The problem with doing that is that both guitars will end up with the exact same tone, which means they won't separate well at all in the final mix. In order to achieve separation and definition, you need to use two different tones. You can do this by changing the tone on the amp, or better yet, use a completely different amp. For this song, I'll be using a virtual amp modeler called Shred, which comes with Mixcraft. Setup for this track using an amp modeler is going to be completely different than it was for the last guitar. The first thing you might notice is, well, there's no amp. Instead, I'm going to plug into my guitar pedal and use it mostly for compression. No effects or distortion at all. The signal coming from the pedal is completely clean, also giving me the ability to push the signal if needed. For example, if your guitar is not equipped with active type pickups, you may need to raise the output on the pedal to make up for the slightly weaker line level signal produced by passive pickups. Using the left or mono line output, I'm going to plug the pedal directly into my mixer. In order to use an amp modeler and monitor your playing in real time, you will need an audio interface which comes with its own ASIO driver. The ASIO driver is written specifically to provide low or zero latency for the interface. What you do not want to do is download and install a generic ASIO driver to try getting low latency from your computer's onboard sound card. The reason is that unless the driver was written specifically for your sound card, you will most likely experience issues. Here are a couple examples of audio interfaces. For instance, in my studio I might use this rack mountable Tascam US2000 which provides me with enough inputs to record an entire drum set. If you don't need more than two inputs, you might choose this portable US366. Both come with their own ASIO driver, providing ultra-low latency. Now that I've got my hardware set up, here's where Shred comes into play. Now that we've got our signal routed to the mixing board, and it's completely clean, we're going to bring up Shred within Mixcraft. First thing I will do is arm the track we wish to record on, and then click the monitor button so I can hear it play back in real time, and click the effects button and select the Shred amp simulator. And then I'll bring up its interface, choose the preset that I like to start with, And as you can tell, it's a little bit noisy, so I'm going to click the noise gate that comes with Shred. I'm also going to pull down some low end on it, tweak that preset a little bit. And it should now sound like an actual guitar amp, and I think we're ready to do some takes.
Okay, now that we've got the drums, bass, and both rhythm guitars laid down, you can definitely start to hear the song take shape. The two main things left to record are the guitar solos and vocals. I leave these for last because I feel it's important that the song physically exists before the guitar solos are laid down and your vocalist begins writing lyrics. For example, some artists might come up with a guitar riff and immediately start writing lyrics. In my experience, vocal lines and melodies tend to turn out better if the writer has a full song to find hooks and grooves. Not saying this is the only way to create a good song, but it works for me. For this song, Bill and I wrote the riffs and created the entire structure before sending a rough recording to the vocalist to create the lyrics, melodies, and harmonies. So let's get started recording the guitar solos. I'm going to use my physical amplifier and mic it up with a Shure SM57, just as we did when recording our first guitar. Sticking with the idea that each guitar track needs to have a slightly different tone, I'm going to take out some highs and add some mids to make sure the solo sits on top of the other guitar parts. Again, remember when miking your cabinet to place the microphone as close as you can without touching the face of the cabinet and positioning the mic just off to one side of the cone. Now let's get a level check and record these solos. Thank <laughs> you. 